Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage. Two days here in Las Vegas for Black Hat. This is the security show where the technologists get together and they talk about what's going on in security, architecture, everything's happening here. This three shows, RSA, AWS Reinforced, and Black Hat make up a majority of the industry shows. The Cube is there. Again, two days of Walter Walker, but I'm John Furrier, host of the Cube at Ryan A. Bear here. He is the Business Information Security Officer at ICE and NYSE. Ryan, great to have you on the Cube again. We saw you at RSA, you were with yeah. Dave and Shelley. Great to come back. Yeah, it was great. Thanks for having me again. I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to our conversation. So we had a great chat last night about security, wide ranging conversation. I wish we had the tape roll on, it would have been <laughs> epic. Um, but you have a unique position. Take, first explain what you do, business information security officer. It's not a CISO, but there's multiple roles. ICE is also the parent company of the NYSC. A lot of data, you guys have massive amounts of security products. Um, you are involved in a lot of that, those discussions on what to buy, vendors that are out there. We're seeing more products roll than ever before, even though it's so-called consolidating. Explain what you do. Yeah, so um, about four years ago, we knew we had a pretty bad, bad sprawl problem because we were building and buying things like crazy, right? We've got 40 different major business units spanning a lot of different things, all essentially the same, like trying to give transparency to our customers across markets of different you know, instruments. But essentially we've got a mortgage technology side, we've got our old derivatives trading and clearing, that was the thing that started ICE. And after we acquired the New York Stock Exchange in 2013, we, we started building out things around that. But we also did fixed income, data services, and when one of our clearing houses clears equities instead of derivatives. So I managed, NYSC, fixed income, data services, and our IceClear credit. A lot of the regulatory landscape comes from those businesses, so I'm dealing a lot with the FCC, the CFTC, and some other regulators. But also, it's really important to understand that we have cloud-based infrastructure, but we're always going to be an on-prem solution because we want to control the latency of the market. So we're really different in a lot of cases to most people in the fact that we have to secure on-prem and data centers we own, some places that we silo information, but also in the cloud across all three major providers. And there's a lot going on in the infrastructure. Can you explain kind of what your role is on the business side, how that, and what other CISO or ISOs are out there? Are there ex-ISOs? I mean, how many people are working on, like looking at the whole landscape of ICE and the portfolio? Yeah, we've got a great partnership with my boss. He's fantastic. He's been with us for about two years. Uh, he replaced the, my mentor who retired. Uh, his name is Steve Pugh, and he's been CISO for almost three years now. Um, he's been an amazing partner in this uh, endeavor. We've also got Channing House over Mortgage Technology and Barimba Velaku who are doing the trading and clearing. So us three together with the head of first line of defense and the head of second line of defense are you know, basically a part of that entire conversation. What's your infrastructure look like? Does my product that I already have in place work for you as well? Should we expand that relationship? Do we need to do something else in that space? So mostly it's enterprise level, outsourcing as a subservice to the function, but for the most part, we're, we're uh, using the same technology across. And what's your focus? What do you look at? I mean, you say the business side, is that all the work, workers, the securing the data, the entire state? What is your? All of it. So identity access management, PAM, um, vulnerability management, uh, threat intel. The reputational hit that would happen to NYSE may not be as a, a big of a threat that we would look at for mortgage technology, right? Because some, some people don't even yeah. realize that we own over 55% of all mortgages in the US and they don't realize that that's the same company, right? So a bad day at NYSE is far different than a bad day at the mortgage yeah. technology side from a reputational hit. We want to be on the Wall Street Journal for the right reasons, or in Silicon Angle <laughs> for the right reasons. Absolutely, right? and we're so, going to bridge, build the bridge between Silicon Valley and, and in, uh, New York. Certainly you're starting to see digital, the digitization of technology. And there's just more and more data, and, I would, and ICE is big. I mean, you guys are a big company. Yeah. Um, and when you look at the data, it's, it's billions. And you just, I just had earnings recently, and uh, I was talking to some of the folks over there, um, apparently, a lot of the sectors are up because of generative AI. So in your business, because you have some regulation, which you probably have good data practices in those regulated industries. So yeah, it sounds like to. Gen AI might be a good tailwind. Gen AI is, an, is an impacting your business, isn't it? It is. So a big chunk of it is in the ICE data services space, right? We're very, very proud of all the information that we have and we're allowed to provide to our customers in any format or fashion that they want. We're talking about things like you know, the weather or where some crops might be that might affect the derivatives on those platforms, right? So we're giving them all the information they can provide. But because of that, it's a wide swath of a lot of different information, PII versus non-PII. And what we're doing is we are building some models in our own space. We've got an amazing partner on the NYSC side who's now turned into our head of uh, AI excellence. So he's built a AI playing ground of sorts where we're building models, we're looking at partners in that space. We're also building some of our own. So my role is vetting those partners that we might work with, finding the right solution sets to allow folks to use these things for productivity while also doing it in a secure manner so we don't 
you know, release out. He's the, been on the Cube too as well. <laughs> the Cube alumni, we're interviewing all the top dogs over That's there. That's great. So I want to get your thoughts. So now you guys also got a big view and, and a lot at risk. So you got to protect the, you know, the jewels, if you will. In this yeah. case, it's the data. Um, and and in this show here, continuing to see, and we're at an inflection point. And so the the catalyst is a platform shift. Um, and it's going to impact the security industry because data is the core. Data is driving it. Generative AI is fed by data. Um, and so we did a survey. We did some research on the Cube Research side. And I posted a tweet yesterday. I want to get your reaction to this. Cybersecurity products sprawl out of control. The average enterprise uses 130 products to safeguard infrastructure apps and data. Experts warn, that's us, that this number could rise. Um, and then 51% of the enterprises plan to increase their security providers in next year, despite conventional wisdom this vendor consolidation isn't happening, mainly because there's more holes to fill, more threats to attack. So the whole, we're going to consolidate our vendors is a good thought, but not reality. So that's happening. At the same time, a lot of folks are looking at thinking about how to reset the foundation of their infrastructure. And that's what you're doing, right? So yeah. I want to get your thoughts. Current situation, do you, what's your reaction to them on that research? And then how do you think about the future? And all that with a flat budget for the last three years <laughs> in most of the major cybersecurity functions, right? So it's like, oh, something's got, another shoe's got to fall, right? Where's it going to land? So what we're doing is I'm building an internal tool. I'm working with our procurement team and my replacement who now runs GRC in the group. He's an amazing um, practitioner. We're locking together everything that shows what tool affects what risk, if we built it or if we bought it and then stacking them up against our threats. So in places where we've got six belts and suspenders, probably don't need to do anything there. Maybe can even decrease a little bit. Where we're lacking, will these solutions also help in that space or do we need to build something or buy something, right? And then I'm tying that to contract expiry. So my PMOs will know exactly six months out when X tool is going to be going off the boat when we need to do a new bake off, see the new exciting stuff that we're seeing like at places mm -hmm. like Black Hat and working with our partners in the venture capital space as well as see what's coming out of there. So the trend is to retrench, deal with what the existing tools you have, integrate and build in-house, if you will, vertically, vertically integrated stacks. Yeah, I, I'm a build versus buy guy. We've got an amazing engineering team that's dedicated to cybersecurity. These folks are building stuff that we're using on a day-to-day -day basis for root cause analysis, for threat intel, and piping all of that together through a SIM, a data lake, and identifying and automatically categorizing all cyber incidents. It's fantastic. I've never seen anyone build anything like these guys. So to that end, I want to use that ability and span out and sprawl for all out and see, are we doing something that we can make ourselves or do we really need to work with the subject matter experts in the space and buy this product? So, so two things that are fact, we hear this consistently and you mentioned one of them, budgets aren't increasing exponentially to the state of the threats and two, skills and, and people. So the only solution there is operating leverage with software. That's right. So what is your vision on how uh, a CISO or a business uh, infrastructure security officer should think about because uh, they're doing this right now in every company that's going to move to the next level is thinking, okay, I got the current situation, we'll deal with that, but I got to really re-engineer my infrastructure from end to end, whether it's vertically integrated. How do you set that up? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough cookie to crack and you basically turn into a politician, right? So if you think back to vulnerability management 10, 15 years ago, developers didn't want to do any of that. They didn't, want to, they didn't want somebody to tell them their precious baby had vulnerabilities in it, but you had to build those relationships, show that trust, go and show them what the product is. You know, Whenever you're doing a scan, say, Look, I really do believe this is a critical, but if you want to talk about why you think it's a medium, let's have a conversation. Same thing on the operation side, right? So system engineering, sysops, these are the folks that are building the infrastructure in our data centers and managing everything in the cloud. I've got to be really close in partnership with them, right? So a lot of it is, hey, six months from now, we're going to have to roll out this huge EDR. We're going to need a lot of help from your side. What's PM can I work with? Where can I set everybody up to have an understanding of what we need from you guys and going from there? It's a lot of internal politics, but having those good relationships is huge. It's interesting, you see a lot of the vendors have either tools or platforms. So you got platforms and platforms together, a lot of tools are hanging out there. And then you see things like self-inflicted wounds by a configuration error, not a breach, but just like the disruption impact we just recently saw with CrowdStrike and Microsoft was evident of, and some got hit more than others, obviously we saw that in the press, but that's not a breach. That is just malpractice in the sense of their processes failed or you know, auto update shouldn't have been on and just no one knew, hey, 10 years ago or five weeks ago, some guy did that, we didn't do the update, he no longer works at the company. I mean, there's chaos yeah. on the human side as well as auditing all this. So what it, what's your take on that? How do you look at that whole debacle and the whole general trend of watching out for either self-inflicted wounds through configuration errors, 
and that could cause havoc. Cyber operationalization. It's a tough word to say, and I almost messed it up every time. I'm glad I got it right that time. So basically, we're saying we need to eat our own dog food. We need to look internal, right? So we've got two PMOs that are going through everything that we've built and bought, making sure we have right DR, making sure we're using the proper CI, CD pipeline, SDLC. Why would a cyber tool get to bypass that same thing that you're doing to your, inflicting upon your developers for customers, right? So uh, a lot in that space is being in, uh, getting cleaned up, and I'm really proud of that. Um, and it's, it's going really well. It's going really quickly. The folks see the forest for the trees. The system operations folks are partnering with us, and it's, it's been going great. You know, I always see, uh, you know, I've been in this business for a long time, watched the evolution of IT, you know, ever since mainframe went to minis and then networks and then PCs, and then you have what we have today. Um, IT was a function to serve the business. Yep. Now it's the business, and that's not IT anymore, it's engineering, right? And so this is a, now a challenge for companies that didn't invest in making their IT lean in towards engineering. Yeah. We're at an inflection point. What do you see out there? Because you're living it, and other companies are. What's your advice to folks out there who have to like, okay, I got to upgrade my game. I outsourced a bunch of stuff. Now we're paying the pen penalty for that. I didn't develop the core competency, but I want to do a reset. What's your advice to folks? Don't just go to a black hat or an RSA or a VC and buy a bunch of products just because you think that's going to fill the holes. You need to start with what you're trying to accomplish or what the bad actor is trying to accomplish. We did this about 15 years ago, me and the CISO at the time. We built what we call threat objectives. And they're different across all the MBUs, right? But those threat objectives are essentially what the bad actor is trying to do. And you tie that to your risks, you tie that to your controls, you figure out what's key and what's not, where you have gaps, and that will drive what you need. If something is going to happen to the New York Stock Exchange market, I need to be aware of how we can make sure that doesn't happen or fix it or be the one that's on the boots on the ground. So like, don't just buy a bunch of products quite yet, right? Really establish the understanding of what the bad actors are going to try to do for you. And it's not just for a technology company that's in financial services. It's insurance companies, it's brick and mortars, it's warehouses. Yeah. They're going to have different threat objectives than me, and they're, that's going to really drive what they need to be focusing on building or buying. I asked the CISO one time the same question, and he, he was a Southern guy, and he said, you know, it's all about protecting the cheddar. I go, because at the end of the day, he had to assess was, where's the value? That's right. And you got to, they want the money. Right. right. With, you don't rob a bank not to get the cash. And right. So the bad guys want the cheddar. So he said, yeah, well, protect the cheddar. And what he meant was, we left look at all the assets and say, where's the data that's valuable? Yeah. Let's protect that and then work backwards from that and then go and then go end to end and and nail the whole company. It's like, okay, great. So I, I love that answer. Yeah. Now I'll ask you the same question. In today's world, data is also part of a control plane that's going to be end to end to feed generative ads. So it's not just the data as an asset, it's the data, whether it's a config file being pushed out or data managing uh, workloads because now you have a new data layer emerging. What, yep. what, how do you see this new data platform emerging? Because that's going to be change the catalog business. Uh, you got data separating from the database, uh, open table formats, intelligent applications. Yeah. They're all rolling very fast down Main Street here. Yeah, so you got to really be cognizant of workflows, which executables are supposed to be doing what on which non-human identities. You got to make sure that you're piping that into your vulnerability management identification. You have to have those folks on board with a process on how you build out those solutions. It's really difficult to cut, to, to figure it out whenever there's three different cloud providers that you're using and you're on-prem. But it's, we're, we're, we're happy to say that we're working really well on it. Um, it's something changes every day and the second we get our arms around it, we acquire a new company like we did with Black Knight with 7,000 employees that are in a different infrastructure cloud that we weren't used to. But I'm, I, I'm confident in the market. I think that the folks are making really, really good tools out there and I'm, I'm making some pretty good programs myself as well. Well, you guys are doing a great job. Um, what do you see in the market that, that people should pay attention to that that's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen in this industry right now? Take us through your, uh, the 20 mile stairs, look at the next five years. What's going to happen? What should, what's the most important story in the security vertical? Uh, PQC pretty scares me pretty much. Um, I think there's some great folks that are making some encryption models out there that we're talking to. Um, I really like some ideas around encryption at the hardware level for a GPU, because if everybody's going to be doing all this massive processing power and you're going to be slicing and serving up all this data to the end prompt user, you really need to make sure that you're securing that infrastructure. So uh, there's a couple of good companies out there that are doing some really great work in encryption at the GPU level. And also, how do you secure the model? Like, I, I like the companies that are 
we're gonna make this model, it's gonna be for you, we're gonna put it in, in air gapped in your data center if you want it, or we can put it on a dedicated hypervisor, being agile in that space for me, because depending upon the use case, I'm gonna to wanna to put it somewhere different and I'm gonna secure it differently. Yeah, data security is critical. I, you know, while we were talking last night and we had a meeting, I tweeted to, uh, just an innocent tweet I wrote to, to another tw uh, Twitter user, X user, Vertical integration, it was all about Zuckerberg and Meta and how yeah, they're becoming yeah. great. I said, vertical integration and end-to-end -end workflows are the new developer playbook with open source software for speed. Kernel developers will rise as it's a system revolution. And it's got, th thousand went viral. It's got like, you know, close to 8,000. Congrats. Years. Well, it was just, it's just hit a nerve, but that was just, it was, was a pithy statement. What's your reaction to that? Because what, you know, what's hitting is, is that end-to-end -end was not like something that's talked about before. It was almost tab, well, go to the cloud, decompose, building blocks. But that's in our DNA, man. That's, that's what we are, that's what we do. We're a technology company first. We're in the financial market space, but all we're doing is providing end-to-end -end transparency for an exchange of services or needs to any customer that wants it both in the equities market or the derivatives market, and now in the mortgage technology space. After 2009, we took, we took heed to that. We started really getting aggressive in that space to provide more understanding of what's going on and where the data is residing and where it's moving. We were very good at that. We've been doing that for 20 years, and NYSC has been around for 232 years. And what, never going to stop. What, and what's your take for the average enterprise to start thinking about vertically integrating stacks? What's your, what's the, how, do you, how do you see them? It's the, it's the balance with zero trust, right? You want to be able to have access to everything, but you really have to nail down the role-based access control. You have to understand who's supposed to have access to what, and you really need to understand how it's going to be flowing through. All right, what's the coolest thing you worked on right now? Oh, um, we're building a Threat Intel thing that is pretty awesome. Um, we've got an amazing Threat Intel team, both in Singapore and in, Amer in uh, Atlanta, and they're uh, looking at things that are going on, being talked about us, and like piping it into our feed that goes into our Chasm solution. It's, it's exciting stuff. Because I've been looking at Threat Intel companies and vendors forever, and I've never found a solution like this, and these guys built it, so it's, it's, it's really exciting. So you feel good where you're at? I do. I, I mean, we live in this space <laughs> for a reason. We didn't the get band, these guys. gray hairs for nothing, right? <laughs> Don't like bait those guys out there. That's right. All right, what's the conversation like at Black Hat? Honestly, here, it's, it's one of those shows with a lot of hallway tracks, a lot of hallway conversations, a lot of one-on-ones. What's, what's, what's your ear to the ground tell you what's going on? So we've got 38 people, I think, now here. A lot from the new acquisition, Black Knights. We're really happy to bring those folks into our team, work together on that, and meet them for, some, for the first time. We also have our capital markets team here, so we're talking to a lot of the VCs, a lot of the companies that are coming out of stealth and getting funding, so working them through that process. Some pretty massive funding rounds. I saw some two yes. announcements, Armus and Abnormal Security, two yes. monster rounds, so three ipos We love those guys, and Evan's great. I love Evan and Abnormal, and Armus is fantastic as well. We've been talking with them a lot lately. Those are two great companies, and they deserve everything they get. Let me ask you a question. You, you, I mean, first of all, you one, you have a great operation, you just laid out some of that. When you meet the vendors, how can you spot the winners? What's the, do you have any kind of like secret tell sign? What, what jumps out when gets your, what gets your attention? What gets you enthusiastic? And then what gives you the confidence? You're going to ruin my secret squirrel? Come on, man. <laughs> um, I, I asked one you question. You just say no, it's my secret sauce. No, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> just remember this. Um, so whenever I have a company that I have one use case for that I'm thinking this would be a great opportunity to fill that gap, I'll ask them, if they're thinking about working in a side space or you know, branching out to another piece of what we're in charge of. And more times than not, the, the companies that are the winners will just directly tell you that's not what we're interested in. This is what we do, we're gonna be the best in breed in this, and I love that. Having a central focus on what your goal is to do for your customers is massive. Versus groping right. for a deal. Yeah, so there's a lot of companies out there you see, they start sprawling and they start adding and building and buying and acquiring and before you know it they can't support everything and then you see them carve up later. What's the answer to product sprawl? Is this inevitable? It's just, in, will <sighs> Gen AI put an abstraction layer around and just deal with it as a bunch of little points of light and subsystems within one larger system or is it just, does it need to vaporize? Is it fair to say I don't know yet? I mean, I really yeah. don't. I, 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 I like the companies that we work with. There's a lot that we've had a long-standing relationship with, but we also do really, really short contracts for a reason. We're very hyper-aggressive in bake-offs. We want to see what else is out there. Coming to amazing events like this yeah. gives us that opportunity. Um, I think you're going to see some decrease, despite what that uh, SiliconANGLE report said. You can't have, have more and then still be tired of how many yeah. you got. Yeah. So uh, really focusing on the ones that are saving the bacon for us, or the yeah. cheddar, as your friend said. I'm also Southern, by the way. Uh, is really what's important here. I think we'll probably do some alignment 
and do some build versus buy. It has buy. to be consolidation at some level. I think so. The rationalization, because risk management will force it. That's rationalization right. on the portfolio. Yeah, and we work directly with our enterprise risk management team, so it's not just cyber risk I'm looking at, it's a business yeah. risks as well, so. I mean, I think, I think you know, you, you made some interesting comments last night, integration's huge, interoperability. Yeah, I mean, you have to. Transparency. We, we built a lot of great products. We've also acquired a lot of companies over the last, you know, 10 years. We acquired a lot of companies in the space in nice data yeah. services. Mortgage technology was a couple of builds, but the rest were buys, and interlocking all that together, we're not necessarily using the same security tools over here because that one's on the cloud and we're on prem. Those are the decisions we're making every day, and we're really good at it. Well, Ryan, we really appreciate you in our community sharing your insights here on the Cube at Black Hat, and uh, great dinner with your peers last night, and uh, great conversations again here in the trenches. A lot of people making big moves coming up, so yeah, you guys are leading the charge. Congratulations. Yeah. We're excited. Thanks so much for coming to dinner, and thanks for having me here. All I right, it. this is the Cube. We're getting all the action. We're getting all the data. We're sharing with you. We're open. We're transparent. All free. Coverage from, from Black Hat, I'm John Furrier here, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching.